Well, Thurston Howell III, man, congratulations on a long and, and bountiful career. You know, like you said in the beginning, had you signed with a label after a few albums, you could have just burnt out and been out of it. But at this point, you, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve albums. Thirty five, albums and mixtapes. Thirty albums? If okay, you, my if bad. You, if you cop the USB, because I count my, my mixtapes as albums too. I make them shits like albums. So there's mm. 32, there's over 150 music videos on my channel. You know what I mean? And you could see what I learned at MTV working there all them years. I learned what the fuck it is to do production and how to really be tight with that schedule and, and really get busy with no budget, no promotion, no label, no machine. I've never had any of that and I'm here more than 20 something years, you know, manifesting hip hop. Yeah, absolutely. And this was during a time you know, in the beginning when there was no internet, there was no streaming, there was no YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, if you didn't sign to a major label, you had a very slim chance of actually supporting yourself as a hip hop artist. And that's something you've done from that era to today. You're still fresh, you look healthy. Uh, from what I understand, you're happily married. Your wife is supportive of what you do. Uh, all, all you have kids. Yeah, I'm in my you know? 50s, you know what I mean? Proud of it. Everybody in my family participates in what we what I'm doing. Low life chapters are all over the world. You know, we mm -hmm. got major chapters in Miami and Orlando. We do all kind of community events. We support the community. We do film production. We got all sorts of artists within what we do and we pushing forward from a positive perspective. You know, because a lot of interviews are doing things like that. They always concerned about what happened before and not knowing where we at now. Right now, we just righteous, positive men building within our communities and with our people. The same way people, you know, like the American jumped in to help me. The Street Lights Production Assistant Program jumped in to help me. And all they asked me to do was pay that forward later. You know what I mean? When I get a chance, and I believe I've done that a thousand folds over to where I've changed many lives, introducing them into the arts or entertainment or helping take brothers off the street or just taking them off the street mentality. Because I never left the street. I just left the mentality. You know what I mean? So that's how I was able to carry things further and to transform the entire low life movement into a positive, you know, force and hip hop organization. It's not no street gang shit or nothing like that no more. We pushing this forward, you know, to benefit our people, man. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. And it's no longer uh, an organization that's putting department stores out of business and, and so forth. And, you know, like I said, now you have shows like Raising Canaan that actually touches on what you guys were doing back then. Yep. You know, I mean, the lowlifes are literally mentioned in Raising Canaan. And, you know, the girl Jukebox is a lowlife and she's basically surviving by robbing, you know, polo, you know, trucks and, and yeah. selling them on the street and so forth. I mean, how was it to actually, you know, from being the founder of the lowlifes to actually see the lowlifes on a major TV show like this? I mean, it was big and it was beautiful because they just warming it up for us. You know, I look at, I look at my story and the lowlife story no different than Al Capone's story. We want to be mentioned in 50,000 of your TV shows and commercials and mo look how much Al Capone's story is utilized everywhere. That's mm -hmm. what we want for the low life story. We want that shit mentioned in everything coming up and coming out. You know what I mean? So, so it was a big thing. I salute 50 for adding it in. You know, the only thing, um, it wasn't a Queens thing back then. You know what I mean? There was straight Brooklyn, but there was dudes from everywhere that was down, Bronx, you know, Queens dudes that were down with us and all that. But we was in Brooklyn and we was in the cities and things like that. But like I said, it's all love, man, because they warming it up for us. There we go, man. Uh, congrats on uh, your longevity in this business. A very tough business to even make it a year through. And now you're, you know, 20 plus years in it, you know. Uh, you. Still doing your thing, big catalog, classic songs, and a big influence on the culture, which is a very important thing to people like you and I. Yep. So I wish you all the best, man. Until next time. I appreciate that, man. Peace. Peace.